All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show with Jed Stuckert here, the Lindenwood Lions out of the OVC, uh, year two for them in that conference. Uh, Coach, good to see you, man. How are you doing today? Great, Boss Man. It's good to be on with you, man. We've been looking forward to this. Yes, sir. Coach, let me ask you, man, has it felt like six years of Lindenwood going? I know you had the COVID year where you didn't was three or seven, but the COVID year didn't, didn't happen. So does it feel like it's been going here six seasons already, man, after all these years? Yeah. Yeah, I tell you how fast that goes. And the older I get, the faster these go. But uh, yeah, it just seems like it feels like we've been here for three years. But it, it, you know, when you say it like that, it, it is a uh, it is crazy how fast the time at Lindenwood's been. We've seen a lot of changes. Uh, it's been an exciting time here. Um, when we got here, kind of trying to get get the program turned a little bit, and then lo and behold, bam, we're find out a year ago we're we're bouncing up into FCS Division One and into the Valley. Uh, Ohio Valley, it's exciting. And Coach, do you feel like it's been two separate jobs and one for you with the transition going on and going from D2 to FCS? Oh, it totally does. I mean, I think, you know, there's some similarities, you know, football's football in college, but, you know, when when you add a transition in there, um, you know, there there's no doubt, you know, we kind of, you know, there's just enough, changes that have to happen whether it's recruiting but there's also it, it goes outside of athletics too i mean it goes into the mission department into the uh you know it's a school move you know a lot of people have to understand that you know getting everybody uh, outside of athletics to understand that this moving up uh is is a school thing and not just an athletics thing and luckily we're really fortunate blessed to have a president dr porter that um, is all about this move. He's done a great job of leading us through this this move and this era of moving up, and uh, and he's completely behind it, which gives us a lot of confidence. And so I'm I'm pretty fortunate uh, to have him and our AD Jason Coomer just uh, all on board with this uh, making this move as uh, successful as we can. And Coach Stuger, for you, what has been like the biggest adjustment going from D two to FCS or having your guys on campus and stuff. How, what's been the biggest challenge for you as that coach trying to get your staff to get up to speed on the rules of FCS versus D two and trying to get your players where all that all they need is support that, that that they need as well. Well, that's a great question. I mean, I think number one, there's not a ton of differences as far as like compliance or recruiting rules. There's a few calendar changes when you move up from D two to Division one, but it's pretty similar. Uh, in a lot of ways. So that part was pretty easy to adjust to. Um, yeah, you know, there are a few more times where you you can't talk to kids uh, where you could in Division Two, or maybe one phone call a week where it used to not matter in D2, however many calls. So little things like that. I think the biggest adjustment, obviously, is just on the field. I mean, I think the reality is, is, you know, that's been the number one question I've been asked a lot is, you know, how do you transition a team from D2 to D1 and what are the differences that you see? And, and and we saw we saw it last year. We're still seeing it this year a little bit. A lot of that's just in the trenches. You know, you look at the offense, defensive lines um, are, are different um, size wise, um, you know, and I think taking time, you know, you have to find, you know, you have to be a little patient, uh, especially when you're moving a team. And we didn't get sometimes in a transition, you get a complete year to when it's announced that you're going to be moving up. So usually most of the time people finish that year at the level they're at. Well, when we found out, you know, a, a year ago from February, um, we found out that we were making an immediate move. So we only had February, you know, March, April. We only had, uh, you know, about five months to really get ready for a Division One schedule last year. So we didn't have a whole lot of time from a recruiting standpoint. And so we were taking a lot of our Division Two kids you know, into that, into that first season. And so, you know, so now you know, we're able to recruit more and get more guys in the building on campus that are a little bit more on the division one level um, as far as recruiting goes, but it takes some time. That's where you got to kind of, you, you got to, it's some growing pains. You got to kind of be patient through it. And how, and how important is it to have a, your strength and conditioning team really gets your guys bigger because a lot of it is actually that strength and size. So how important has it been with those and those traditional guys to make sure that your guys are getting bigger and stronger and faster, but in the right ways? So that's huge. I mean, it's like, uh, uh, you know, number one, you know, they spend so much time with them in the summer. I mean, Coach Hall, our strength coach, is basically the head coach of the summer. You know, they're spending – 
so much time in the weight room uh, on the field running part of the conditioning strength. We get to spend some time with them doing some football stuff, but, you know, it's basically him running, you know, uh, that summer that obviously the winter and the spring is huge, but, but really the summer is, is, uh, is really important because you're coming, uh, coming right into fall camp. And so, you know, this, the strength and conditioning program is so vital in programs. Recruiting is the lifeblood, but your strength coach and their staff is, uh, you know, that's what maintains, that's what grows. Uh, that's that's huge, you know, and we, we're blessed to have a good one in Coach Hall. And, and also, Coach, it kind of beats me recruiting-wise, being in St. Louis, the St. Louis area, the Midwest, now you're in FCS, how has the recruiting calls been going now, Danny Trips? Yes, um, guys have opportunity to play at the D1 level now and just knowing that you're building something special out there. Well, recruiting's hard enough as it is, but I tell you what, you know, if people, once people get on this campus and they see the location where, you know, being outside of St. Louis and St. Charles here and having access to St. Louis being 30 minutes away, it's such a great area here. Um, so, I think it's a huge advantage when we get recruits to get on campus. They see our location, where we're at, um, see our facilities. Our stadium is beautiful. You know, we've got a brand new locker room. We got a brand new video board. Um, our strength uh, and conditioning center is enormous, and then uh, and it's just a beautiful campus. So when you know it does, it is easier be, to get D one guys here, but it's also easier, a little bit easier to get them signed because they. We we were recruiting a lot of FCS Division One guys when we were Division Two here because of the facilities and because of the location. Nine times out of ten, the reason why we lost them is because they had an opportunity to play Division One football, um, and so that's why sometimes we could get one or two, but then most of them would latch on to that opportunity to play at the highest level possible. And so, you know, now it's a little different because we're we're able to land some of those guys because hey, that's the next box they can check is that hey, this is this is awesome, beautiful location, beautiful field facilities, and you get to check the box of playing you know Division One football as well. So it's been a big help. And coach, let me ask you this: I know you want guys who who can play and play play the right way, but what's the things you look for in a, in a young man for tangibles and character off the field that, that you want to bring to your program? So that's the first thing we look at. I think that's a cliched thing that everybody says. You know, I've always told coaches or young coaches that ask me a lot about our philosophy and recruiting. I, I always tell younger coaches that are just getting into this, you know, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches if you can be disciplined enough to say no uh, to to just a great looking film. You know, if you got somebody that is 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 electric on the field or they're just great at what they do, but they don't do some of the intangibles as far as uh, in the classroom that, that they're, you know, they're not taking their academics serious or, you know, they're maybe they're not the type of leaders that they really should be. Um, sometimes, you know, you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble just overlooking those things just because somebody plays great on the field, because, you know, the problem is, is once they get here, are they going to follow those same habits? Yes. And, and next thing you know, you're chasing them to scoop class. You got to chase them to the weight room. And so you have to be disciplined to say no to really good, good film. You know, you got to be able to say, okay, what are the other, you know, let's start with character, work ethic. What are their high school coaches or their junior college coaches or the transfer portal? What does their former coaches say of them as a person, as a leader? You know, are they trustworthy? And then, you know, put the film on, say, you know, hey, this is a, a guy that would fit great with the culture of our team. And I think, you know, that's one the success that we've had around here at Linwood for the last five five, six years is, you know, um, we've, st we started recruiting those type of guys. And, you know, when you have a healthy locker room, um, it, it's pretty amazing because you just don't have the off the field, uh, issues that, that create a lot of headaches. Well, 100%. And talk about this too, coach, being in St. Louis area, the opportunities for internships, networking, once football stops for you, we all know football will stop for us eventually, stop for me, stop for you. <laughs> so like, once it stops for, for them, uh, whenever that is, talk about that opportunity, getting that Lindenwood degree, getting them networking opportunities and being able to have a job once football ends. Well, you know what? It's amazing because there's so much, uh, there are so many head, headquarters here. You know, we have a lot of kids that are, you know, we have a lot of kids that want to be teachers, you know, obviously want to get into coaching and teach, but we have a lot of 
a lot of guys that are in business, um, you know, want to go either entrepreneurship or business or sports management. You know, our sports management um, degree is is very popular here because of access to the St. Louis Cardinals. Now with the St. Louis City team, the soccer team here, um, you know, with uh, with the Battle Hawks being here, and there are so many kids that have access into sports, um, you know, uh, entities for internships and things like that. To and man. And, and the community here, and especially these sports uh, franchises that are out of here, you know, love to take Lindenwood players and athletes, uh, not just football players, just athletes in general. Uh, but then you start looking into, I mean, when you look at enterprises out of here and, and uh, Edward Jones and all these things, like if it's not sports that you want to get into uh, the internships here. And, you know, because, I mean, you're in a major metropolitan area with, with great access to that. So, that is a great benefit. That goes along with what I was talking about with the location here. Um, and and we start that process a year out, you know, when the kids are coming into their senior year, not just their department, but our but our football team. I'm, I'm, we're already having conversations with our guys to be looking out ahead for what they're going to do in gradu- after graduation to help build an our alumni base all across the country of, of guys trying to help our players get hooked up with guys in any area that they want to get into and uh, use our alumni base as well. Um, because I feel like that's my obligation too, is when we recruit you here, but we want to help place you uh, into, you know, your next step of life in, in getting your occupation going. I feel like that's a big responsibility for me and for us to do that as well. Coach, let me ask you this um, for, for his dad. Oh, uh... I think you said something sort of important about the degree because I know me personally, Coach, my degree is in business. So yeah. for for me, the communications piece is easy because I know football and basketball backwards and forwards. But the business degree helps me off the air take care of business because right. always right. having to be the the marketer, the promoter, getting the syndic- syndicated, all that stuff I can do on my own because of my degree. You're talking about teaching a young man about that classroom piece of taking your degree more importantly because I'm going to live an example of using my degree to help me in my adult life after football. So I'm going to stress that to a young man in their study halls and when they have they have guest speakers really stress about paying attention to their classes for that major because that's going to really help them down the road when yeah. they, get, they get like me almost 40. Well, think about it this way. That kind of a different angle to look at to your point is, you know, how many times have we seen – these great 30 for 30 uh, shows on ESPN or something where the kid, you know, the kid has a story and maybe, and they always resort back to, you know, the missed opportunities in their college program where we just had a great athlete and we are going to use them as much as we can to help us win. But when adversity hit or something, you know, they were nowhere to be seen. And so, you know, what a missed opportunity, you know, when, uh, you know, to, to, to help these kids understand their priorities because, you know, every, every kid on my football team wants to go to the league. You know, there's a goal. A lot of them want to, but we know that, you know, shoot, it's less than 1% of them across this entire country that, that make it. It's a very small percent of guys that make it. And so, you know, that's not great odds out of Lindenwood. You can get a job 98% of the time, you know, with a degree from Lindenwood, you know, those are much better odds. And so it's our responsibility to stress that not just, not just say it, but to stress it, you know, to hold them accountable weekly. If they're not doing well in a class, if they're missing class and and get on that early. So they see that we, we as a coaching staff are emphasizing academics, not just in our words, but in our actions. And then once they get those good habits and they, they know our expectations, you know, that's why we were really blessed to have the highest GPA in our conference last year. I think that's something we'll do again this year. It's a, it's something that we really emphasize, and, and I was really proud of our team to to acquire that that uh, honor last year with their GPAs. And coach, tell me about the OVC. You're coming to a new league, kind of going through it for, for the first time. Now you're merged with the Big South there. So, so tell me about that, and uh, how, how was it kind of going through the league for the first time last year, seeing different styles of play in the OVC and the, the quality of competition. Well, it's a great league, man. I, you know, I, I, it's a historic league. I mean, you think of, you know, one that really the oldest conferences out there, you know, so it's kind of cool, the tradition and history of it. Um, you know, there's good football. I know, I know last year we, we, we didn't get to play everybody, um, you know, because of the conference realignments and schedules were already set. So, 
you know, we'll, we've played almost everybody. Now we'll play Tennessee State this year. We didn't get a chance to play them last year. You know, uh, looks like they're doing an incredible job, having a great season starting off. So it is kind of cool to go into different places we've never been. Um, half this season, we're going to go places we've never been again. So last year and this year, we're going to places for the first time. And that that's – our guys have kind of like – they've kind of thrived on, or they like that. I mean, it's like, sometimes it's easier to go into a place you're familiar with, but to sit there and see, you know, the type of offenses, defenses, there's some that are very similar where it's kind of a, you might see a certain kind of defense week in and week out because it's very similar, um, but it's pretty cool. It's a fun experience. And uh, especially with the addition of the big South, we're going to go to to play two other new opponents we've never played before. So it kind of keeps things interesting. That's for sure. And coach, how proud of were you of your team last week uh, pulling that game out against Western Illinois after a tough game with CMO and but seeing you guys just just bounce back and get that win, a, a tough forty three to forty win. How proud of you were your team uh, this past week, man? Well, thanks for asking that, boss man. Because one one of the things we really asked them coming out of CMO was how are you going to respond? You know, you got punched. We didn't respond well. We didn't handle the environment down there very well. And a lot of this is being such a young team. You know, our quarterback last week played his first, uh, well, against SEMO. Really, that was his first Division One start. You know, he's played a little bit, but that was his first start. And, man, I can't tell you how many kids on our team that that was their first start in a big boy game. Uh, and there's a little bit of wide-eyed and looking around and, man, what's going on? And then, you know, to take a week and have them bounce back. And then even the start of this first half of this last game, it looked like it is like, here we go again. It could have a similar result. And then at halftime to see them just completely, uh, you know, what I noticed about halftime is just the culture of our team and the heart of our team, because number one, the offense and defense, they were almost outdoing each other with apologizing. It was almost like taking accountability. Hey, this was our fault. No, it's our fault. Hey, let's, we got your back. And they, you know, you could tell at halftime the way the offense defense was communicating that, I just knew we were going to go out and win. I, I, they were they were together. They were locked in. They they were taking accountability, and we just came out with a whole different kind of. And so I was really proud of how they bounced back because that was really going to be the test. Is you know how do you bounce back from a loss like that, and then have adversity in the first half and come back? I mean, you know, you can build on heart. You know, because you, you can fix mistakes and things like that. But if a team doesn't have heart, that's pretty hard to get uh, done in one season. And so uh, I I know our guys showed they had a lot of heart last week. It's beautiful to hear because I, I feel like, you know, in that locker room at halftime, you know, sometimes you can go just blame everywhere, blame your girls. Absolutely. All, but to hear that is so unfortunate. I had a lot of that in my career. <laughs> but, You're right. But, but, you. but, but yeah. to hear that they really take accountability and just that right there, you know, you have a team because that's inspiring because, okay, we're going to call him and play well. We, we, we both know. We did. We're not playing, playing, playing the right way. Let's go out here, correct it right now, and you get this job done. And to pull out a game like that is something I think is springboard these young kids into a, a great season and give them like we've been here before. We could, we can do this, yeah. and it'll be all right. Yeah, I think the you know every question you know I've gotten of uh, oops, I'm getting let me uh, let me shut this call off here. <laughs> you know we get we get um uh you know a lot of text messages of people saying you know, man, you must have given them some sort of a halftime speech. And I was kind of laughing because I, it wasn't really that impressive of a speech at halftime. But when I, you know, when I saw the quarterback, when Co when Cole Duggar comes in and tells the defense, man, I, I threw a pick, um, you know, I threw a pick and put you guys in a tough spot. That's on me. I'm going to, I'm going to make it up to you. I mean, you could just see the defense be like, man, I've got your back too, man. They, you know, you took accountability and, and uh, said, you know, I'm going to make it up to you. And of course, that just triggered the defense, saying, "Well, we, you know, we're going to we're going to get the ball back for you." And it was just like I said, it just kind of steamrolled from there. It was pretty cool. And coach, where you sitting for Illinois State State on the film uh, as you all get ready to play them this week uh, at, at noon, man? I'm telling you, man, it's a uh, you know, this is a good football team. You know, they they've got a really good defensive line. It's very active. They get to the quarterback. Um, they move well, and their whole defense. You know, I think. You know, is is the thing that stuck off the page to me right away, and and uh, and 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 they do really good things offensively. But I think you know, watching their defensive line, that's kind of where I tend to start. You know, when I'm, 
you know, because I'm a defensive guy in my career, so I've always been on the defensive side. So I go look at defenses, and uh, they do a really nice job. I know they're going to be uh, extremely ticked off. You know, they they lost a tough one last week to Eastern Illinois, so they're they're going to be at home and want to avenge that loss. And and you know, they're going to look at us as in the way. So our kids are going to have to understand that and be ready to match that because. Uh, you know, it's a it's a story historic program that's done well, and they play in a really tough conference. The Missouri Valley Conference is a is really tough football league, and so um, you know we got to be ready to go. It's going to be a little bit more like a SEMO type team, and this is a good opportunity for our guys to kind of avenge a SEMO loss we didn't like by taking on a team that's pretty similar. Coach, I'm asking you, Coach Stugert, um, when did you decide you want to get in coaching and make this your your, your life's journey and your your life's path helping young men? Well, I tell you, it was kind of a, really by the grace of God, man. I didn't really have a, I didn't have a desire to coach. I played college football at Azusa, but my, a lot of people know this and some people don't. I, I actually wanted, had a career of wanting to get, get into the country music um, industry and, and, uh, and moved to Nashville and was doing all that stuff after I got done playing. But my love for football kind of brought me back when I kind of took a break from music and started and helped at a high school with a friend of mine. And then that next year, Northern Colorado, the head coach there asked me to kind of come volunteer if I wanted to help coach. And I went and then the coaching bug kind of bit me. And before I know it, the music door shut and the football doors opened. And, you know, three years later, I was a defensive coordinator and full fledged into this deal. So, um, you know, I've never looked back and you know, I thank God daily that he brought me into this uh, into this occupation because I don't feel like I go to work uh, every day. I, I go to uh, I go to something I love to do. So. Uh, it, it's one of the most rewarding uh, things I've ever done. 100% coaching. Let me ask you, you know I mean, going to school in Nashville and you was at country music, yeah, it's changed so much there, man. Oh. When, I, when I go there, man, it's like the whole new <laughs> town, man. <laughs> I'm with you, man. We were just there for our OVC meetings and, and I, you know, we'll go there every couple of years to see that city blowing up and, and, and uh, growing and, and uh, the traffic everywhere. I mean, it is, it is a lot different than, than when, when I lived there as well. It's same with Austin Peay in Clarksville. I was like, this is different. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. like yeah. I've been with old OBC with Austin P and MTSU and Western Kentucky. I've been with old OBC. I'm like, all these towns are growing. Well, I'm like, it's just you. amazing. Yeah, I had a chance to, you know, I was I was the other guy when they hired Will Healy down there. I was I was actually the other guy that they were talking to. And so uh, you know, there was a chance that I was going to end up back there uh, in Austin P back in, I think it was in 16 or 15, 16, around that time when, when the, and so um, uh, it didn't work out. You know, I, it was good timing for me that, that God closed those doors. But uh, so I almost entered the OVC a few years ago, but uh, now I'm in it and I love it. Yes, it, it always comes full circle for us, don't it? But God yeah, has sure a way of making it come full circle for us always. It's Amen. Funny. Amen. That's right. So, well, coach, it's great, it's great to talk to you today, coach. Man, I look forward to seeing you on the road here real soon. And uh, get your number offline as well because I can tell Coach Kyle, man, I, I do travel around the OBC and I try to make sure I hit every hit every stop I can around, around, around the conference, you know, when my schedule allows me to do so. Well, we'd love to have you as our guest up here at Lindenwood, boss man. Uh, really appreciate being on with you. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we'd love to have you and host you up here as our guest sometime. We'd love to have you. Sounds good, Coach. I'm getting the rough line, man. It was really fun, man. Sounds good.